Burgers Production Case Introduction. Imagine that you have to decide how many burgers you'll be producing. You can produce a classical burger or a cheeseburger. In order to find the optimal solution, we only use the linear programming. Just as a reminder, this means that we should describe the problem in a form of a goal function and constraints, and we have to only use linear function for that. So let's have a look at the data we've got on the burgers that we'll be producing. So as we said, we have two types of burgers, classical one and a cheeseburger. We know that in the case of the classical burger, we will be earning $2 per unit, whereas the cheeseburger will generate on average $3 for every cheeseburger that we sell. When it comes to the resources we need, we obviously need a bun to create the burger. In both cases, we just need one bun per burger. In the case of meat, the classical burger will have more meat. So we actually need two units of meat and one unit for the cheeseburger. And finally, we've got the cheese. We assume that in the classical burger, there's no cheese. And in the cheeseburger, there's a one unit of cheese per every burger. We also have the following limitations. So first of all, we have just 10 buns. We've got 20 meat and we've got 10 pieces of cheese. Now, using this information, in the next lecture, we will first try to describe a goal function, and later on, we'll try to define the constraints, and finally, we will solve this problem, described in the language of the linear programming in Excel. Before we move on to the describing the function, one more thing, we're going to use the following notation. So to describe the number of classical burgers, we're going to use the letter Z for the variable, and then in the case of the cheeseburger, we're going to use the letter Y. So in the next lecture, we're going to define the goal function and later on the constraints to this case study. Burgers production goal function. Just as a reminder, you have to decide how many burgers you will be producing. You can produce classical burgers or cheeseburger. As a first step, as we said, we have to describe goal function. Now, the general goal of every firm is to maximize the profit. So in the case of our burger producer, we can assume that this is what they will try to achieve. Just as a reminder, we are producing two types of burger, classical burger and cheeseburger. So our profit will look like this. The profit from selling classical burgers plus the profit from selling cheeseburgers. The first part we obviously can present as a multiplication of the profit per one unit and the number of classical burger produced. We obviously assume that we sell everything we produce and the very same goes for the profit from selling cheeseburger. So we've got the profit per one unit multiplied by the number of burgers we have produced sold. As you might remember, we have from the assumption that uh, one classical burger gives us $2 per unit and then the cheeseburger $3. So if we put it into our equation instead of those two elements, we will get the following thing. So the profit per one unit is two, and then the profit per one unit of cheeseburger is three. As you might remember, we said that instead of uh, having this long name, we're going to use just uh, the variable Z, and then instead of uh, having number of cheeseburgers produced, we're going to have the letter Y. So in other words, our equation will look like this. If we simplify it using the mathematical notation, we'll have 2Z plus 3Y is our profit. And as we said, we want to maximize it. So our goal function is to see under the constraints we're going to define in a minute, what number of uh, burgers will give us the maximal profit. But before we are able to solve it, let's define the constraints in a very same manner as we did it for the function goal, in other words, our profit. So let's move to constraints. Burgers production constraints. Just as a reminder, we want to decide how many burgers we will be producing, and we have two types of burgers, so a classical one and a cheeseburger. In the previous lecture, we have defined the goal function, now it's time for the constraints, and we have to define constraints for the resources we've got. We've got three resources, so buns, meat, and cheese, and for each and one of them, we're going to define a separate constraint. So let's start with the buns. We know that we have a limited amount of buns. Part of them will go to the classical burgers, and part of them will be used to produce cheeseburgers. We cannot use more than what we've got. Therefore, here, as you can see, we have this sign equal or smaller to the number of buns we've got. So let's see how we can estimate bands used to produce classical burger. We're going to use for that the usage per unit and the number of classical burgers we'll be producing. In a very same manner, we estimate the cheeseburgers. So how many bands we need for one unit of a cheeseburger and then how many cheeseburgers we're going to produce. From our table of assumptions, we know that for every burger, we just need one ban. 
So we put one here and here. And then again, instead of having this long descriptive name, we're going to use our annotation. So Z for the number of classical burgers we're going to produce and Y for the number of cheeseburgers we're going to produce. So after we replace it, we get the following equation. Obviously, again, we can simplify it and we're going to have this. So Z plus Y should be smaller or equal to 10. This is the number of bands we've got. In this way, we described the constraint that is related to the number of bands we've got. Now let's try to do the same for the meat and cheese. We've got here the usage, so we know that we're going to use two units of meat for the classical burger and one for the cheeseburger, and the cheese is only used for the cheeseburgers. So let's have a look how does it look like for the meat. Again, we have the meat used for, to produce classical burgers and the cheeseburger, and it has to be smaller or equal to what we've got. Again, we estimate the usage of meat by looking at the usage per unit and having the number of classical burgers and the cheeseburgers. Then again, we take from the table that we use two units of meat for the classical burger and one unit of meat for the cheeseburger. All in all, we've got 20 units. So instead of having this, we've got 20. Again, we replace the number of classical burgers with the Z and the number of cheeseburgers with Y. So we got this equation and at the very end we simplify. So we get 2z plus y is smaller or equal to 20. And this will be the constraint that will define us the usage of meat. The last one related to resources will be the constraint around the cheese. Again, we have the cheese that will be used for the classical burgers and the cheeseburger. We use the usage per unit and the number of uh, classical burgers and cheeseburgers. Then we feed in the data from our table. Since we're not going to use anything for the classical burgers, we've got zero here. And then there will be just one unit per every cheeseburger. So we have one here and we have 10 units of cheese. Again, we put the notation, so Z and Y, and we have this very simple equation. So Y has to be equal or smaller to 10. So in this way, we have described the three constraints related to resources. There are two additional constraints we always have to add, and they will be automatically added by the solver when we do it in Excel. But here, let's define it. So we have to make sure that the number of burgers we produce is bigger or equal to zero. So in the case of the classical burgers, we've got Z equal or bigger than zero. And in the case of the cheeseburgers, we've got Y equal or bigger than zero. So that's in short the constraints we have listed. So we have uh, three constraints related to the resources and two constraints related to the number of burgers that we will be producing. In the next lecture, we'll get everything together to see how a proper problem described using linear programming should look like. And later on, we'll move on to Excel where we'll solve the problem using Solver. In this lecture, we'll try to get everything together. So the goal function and the constraint, and we'll move on to solving it in Excel. So just as a reminder, we have to decide how many burgers we will be producing. And there are two types of uh, burgers that we consider. So the classical one and a cheeseburger. As you might remember, we said that properly defined problem using linear programming consists of two elements. So goal function and constraints, and all of them have to be linear function. From the previous lectures, we got the goal function, which is maximizing profit. And it was defined like this after we have to work on that to show it using mathematical language. It looks like this. So 2z plus 3y is our profit. And obviously we want to maximize it. When it comes to the main constraints, we said that we have three main constraints. First one was related to the usage of bun. The second one was related to the usage of meat. And the third one was related to the usage of cheese. Once we put the variables names, we got the following equations. So the constraint related to the bonds was Z plus Y is smaller or equal to 10. Constraint related to the mid is 2Z plus Y is smaller or equal to 20. And in the case of the cheese, it's simply Y smaller or equal to 10. Just as a reminder, Z stands for the number of classical burgers that we will produce and sell, and Y is the number of cheeseburgers that we will produce and sell. Apart from the three main constraints, we also have uh, two constraints related to the quantity. So we know that the quantity has to be bigger than zero. So we have Z bigger than zero and Y bigger than zero. So let's put here also on the goal function and we've got the full problem described in the language of linear programming. So we have one goal function, which is describing the profit and we want to maximize it. And we have uh, five constraints which describe our limitation. 
One is related to the limitation when it comes to the number of buns we've got. The second one, it's related to the limitation on meat. Third one, to the limitation on cheese. And there are two stating that we should not have a negative numbers when it comes to the number of burgers produced. Once we have described the problem in such a way, we can move on to Excel and solve it. And this is what we're going to do in the next two lectures. So let's have a look how we can present this data in Excel. And later on, I will show you how we can solve it using Solver in Excel. In the previous lecture, we have defined the problem in the language of linear programming. Now we'll try to put it into Excel. So please open a file attached to the lecture, which is called Burgers Production Maximal Profit Version 2 Empty. And here in the sheet master, as always, you have a table of contents. We'll have a look at uh, two options. So the first one will be exactly what we did in the previous lecture. And the second option will be a modification of uh, the basic scenario. So let's go first to the option one sheet where we will have exactly the same parameters as we had in the previous lecture. As you will see in row 8, we define the goal function and then starting from row 15 downwards, we've got the constraints. So in row 15, we've got the constraint related to the bands, then to the meat and finally to the cheese. In blue, we have put the variables. So the number of classical burgers, our Z, Z, and then in K9, we've got the Y, in other words, the number of cheeseburgers. We first calculate the goal function, which will be the total profit generated by the company. And we calculate it in L8. This will be a sum of the profit from selling classical burgers and the profit coming from selling the cheeseburgers. Obviously, in the classical burger, profit is calculated the way we did it in the previous lectures. So we simply multiply the number of burgers by the profit per one burger. Since we are producing currently two burgers and every classical burger generates profit of two, we will get four from classical burgers and six from cheeseburgers. In total, our current profit is 10, and obviously we want to increase it. Now, if we go downwards, let's have a look also at the constraints. So for example, in row 15, we've got the constraint related to the buns. In the pink, we put the parameters, so everything which is in front of the variables in the way we have described the problem in previous lectures. So we know that for classical burger, we're going to need one bun, and the same goes for the cheeseburger. So we have one here. And then in column L, we calculate the left hand side of the equation related to the resources. In this case, it will be related to buns. And we, in other words, calculate how much we're going to use given the production that we have defined in J9 and K9. So since we will be producing two classical burgers and two cheeseburgers, and for every one of them, we need just one bun, in total, we will be using four buns. To calculate it properly, we use the sum product function, which multiply this vector by this and provides here a sum. Now, we obviously need also how many bands we've got in total available. And this is what we have defined in M15. The column M, generally speaking here, will be devoted to the right-hand sides of the equations in the constraints. In other words, we will put here the limit on our resources. So in the case of the bands, we've got 10. That's why we've got 10. In the very same manner, we do the meat and cheese. Obviously, what changes is the parameters. So in the case of the meat, we need two units of meat per one burger and one when it comes to the cheeseburger. This means that we use six units of meat for the production of four burgers. And then we also have available 20. And the final constraint we will be interested in is the cheese. We use cheese only for the cheeseburger. Therefore, we just have one here. Since we produce two cheeseburgers, again, using the sum product function, we calculate that we will be using for this set of burgers two units of cheese. And obviously, this is below the 10 we have available. So that's in short when it comes to the data available. In the next lecture, I'm going to show you how to solve this using Solver. And we also will use the second option. One last remark. Remember that the things in blue are our variables. So the Z and Y. For the time being, we have just put some random numbers. And then the things in pink will be the parameters that stand in front of them. Here we've got the ones related to the goal function. And here we've got related to the constraints. In green, we have put the limits on the resources that are in the equations related to the constraints on the right-hand side. And here in column L, you've got the left-hand side of the equation. 
So in this way, we have reflected the equations logic in Excel. Obviously, here we don't have Z and Y, but we have uh, specific numbers. So that's in short, let's move and see how we can solve this problem using the solver. Just as a reminder, in the previous lecture, we have defined the goal function, which we have here this shows us our profit that we want to maximize and then we have defined the constraints in the row 15 for the ban 16 the meat and in 17 for the cheese as you might remember equations related to constraints had two sides so left hand side and right hand side the left hand side is in com l and in the com m we've got the right hand side of these equations we also said that we cannot use more than we had the resources, so the sign for this constraint is smaller or equal. So in other words, the left-hand side has to be smaller or equal to the right-hand side. So let's apply our knowledge about solver and try to find the optimal solution for this case study. So go to the menu above, pick data, and then here, if you have allowed for the installation of the solver, you will see the solver, you pick from it, and then he asks you to define the following things. So first of all, we have to set the objective. In our case, the objective is the total profit. So this will be L8. Now we have to tell him where are the variables. Uh, so uh, where are the numbers he can play with to find the optimal solution? There will be the things in blue. In other words, our variables Z and Y. So the number of classical burgers and cheeseburgers. Currently, we produce two of the first one and two of the second one. We also need the constraints. So as you might remember, we can add them all at one time if they have the same sign. Since we have here the same sign, we're going to do exactly like that. So we first have to input the left-hand side of the equations. And this is the things we've got in column L. And the right-hand side of the equation will be the things we've got in column M. We have defined the main constraints in our problem. And as you might remember, we also had the two additional constraints. So we don't want the number of classical burgers and cheeseburgers to be smaller than zero. But we don't have to add them here because if we press OK, you will see that he has already taken care of that. So we have a tick here. We also have to pick the method which we're going to use to solve the method. It's pre-selected simplex LP, so linear programming. If it's not like this, you should set it for this option. And then you simply press solve. After some time, he will give you this information. We press OK. And as you see, he has already changed the number of burgers we produce. So previously, we were producing two classical burgers and two cheeseburgers. And the profit was 10. Now, after he has analyzed the problem, he has decided that there is no point in producing the burgers and we should just produce the cheeseburgers. This, in a sense, is obvious in this case because the classical burgers generates a profit of just two per unit, whereas the cheeseburger generates the profit of three. Thanks to that, we are able to increase the profit from 10 to 30. Obviously, with the constraints intact, we can also check to what extent we have used our resources. So as you can see, we have used all the bands. So we use 10 and we have 10. When it comes to the meat, we used 10 and we have 20. So there are 10 pieces of meat left. And finally, when it comes to the cheese, we have used 10 and we have 10. So we have used all the resources when it comes to cheese. In the next lecture, we're going to look at second option where there will be some limits on how much we should produce of each and every burger. Let's solve now a modification of our original problem. We will go to sheet option two and here you will see that we have the original problem but we have added apart from the original three constraints that we've got two new ones. So one is related to the minimal amount of cheeseburgers that we want to produce. And the second one is related to the minimal amount of classical burgers that we want to produce. We have defined in column M the right hand side for those constraints. And in column L, we've got the left hand side, which is simply the number of burgers produced. In other words, we want to produce at least two burgers of every type. As in the previous example, we're going to use Solver to generate the optimal solution to this case study. So let's go to Data above and then let's pick Solver. And we will do exactly the same thing as we did in the previous lecture. So first we have to set the objective. Our objective is the total profit. So we select L8. 
we want to maximize it, therefore we have picked this option. Then we want to do it by changing the number of burgers. So our variable will be here. So J9 and K9. Finally, we have to add him the constraints. So first we add the first constraints, the left hand side, the right hand side, exactly as we did in the original problem. Since we have a second group of constraints, we press add and we pick them from here. So the left hand side and the right hand side. Now, the only difference is the sign. So in the case of those two constraints, we want the left hand side to be not smaller or equal, but bigger or equal. Therefore, we're going to pick this sign. Finally, we press OK. We already have pre-selected simplex LP method. So we just press solve. After some time, he has generated the solution to this case study. We press OK. And as you can see, we have a new number of burgers. So instead of zero, like we had in option one, we're going to be producing two classical burgers and the number of cheeseburgers went down from 10 to 8. Our profit is 28 instead of 30 as we had in the option one. But we have available all type of uh, burgers in our store. So as you can see, by adding two constraints, we have changed the optimal solution to a new one. Obviously, if I change the parameters here or the right hand side of our solution, we would get a different solution to our case study. In order to do that, you would have to again use the solver. So if, for example, we increase the number of bands to 20, I would have to go back to solver. The problem is already predefined, so I just press solve. Then after he generates the solution, you press OK. And you have a new set of production. So he will be with bigger number of bands, produce more classical burgers and a little bit more of cheeseburgers. And the profit is going up by 40. So this is the way you can use this sheet. So play with numbers and the solver. And if you have any questions regarding that, please let me know.